Okay, so we are now at a very critical moment because not only are we going to continue talking about the normal distribution, but we're also going to do a lot about reading a Z chart. Reading a Z chart. Now, I want you to use the Z chart because sometimes technology doesn't give us the actual accurate table values. So we will use this Z chart and give you the skills that are necessary to convert from a Z score to a percentage. And later on, we're going to figure out how to take the percentile and get the appropriate Z score from that. And then maybe even further than that, take that percentile and figure out what your target number was or what your X is. So buckle in, we've got some math to do. And most importantly, you don't want to do this video without having the Z-score chart in front of you. Again, I have one of these. It's printable. Um, it's really great to have it because what you can then do is kind of using your hands, you can tactile work on this chart and get your muscle memory ready to be able to look and see where things are and how to use it. And we are going to be using Z charts for almost every chapter from now on out. And when we're not using Z charts, we're going to be using T charts and chi square charts and even a regression chart. So getting used to this is going to be one of the essential skills of statistics. All right, enough warnings aside, let's get into it. Our purpose is to not only learn about this chart, but also learn about going um, below above and between two z-scores. So let's just start off very slow. I'm going to start off very slow with four students. These students got several scores on their exam and all I did was label their z-scores. So you don't know what the average of the exam was, you don't know the standard deviation of what the exam was, we're just going to focus on what does it mean that the student had a z-score of 1.52. So if we look at the picture, having a z-score of 1.52 puts a flag between the 1 and the 2, and I'm going to make that flag with a waving 1.52 right there, and that's where the student landed. Now, I would be very happy with that result because that puts me above normal, and if having higher scores was a good thing, yeah, 1.52. I'm not to genius level, but I'm definitely above 1. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up 1.52 on the table. So let's go to our table. Now, 1.52. Now, there's positive values, and on the other side of this table are negative values. 1.52 is a positive value. Now, I'm noticing that on this um, left-hand side here, there are numbers with little pluses in front of them. These are the z-scores. And you'll notice I have 1.52. So you'll see that I here I have 1.5 and then I got all these numbers on the right. Well up above I have 0, 0 0.01, 0 0.02. So what I want to highlight for you here is I want to highlight this 0 0.02 and I'm going to scroll down here to the 1.5. Now I'm not sure I can get them on the same screen. I barely can. Okay, so the 1.52, if I add the 1.5 and the 0 0.02 together, this would give me my z-score of 1.52. Now you may not want to write on your z-score, but I just want to show you this because if I'm looking up a z equals 1.52, the first part, which is the whole number, if there is one, point, and the second, or the first uh, decimal after this is going to be on the left-hand column. And the right-hand column, or sorry, the top column, I should say, a row, <laughs> this is a row, not a column, this is 0.02. So if I put these together, I get 1.52. Now, just like in the game Battleship, um, if you were trying to find a ship at, let's say, um, C12, you would then go down from the C and over to the 12, and then this is the number you would look at. So what you've just done is you've just looked up your first 
percentage from the Z chart. That's pretty great. So you get your Z score and your Z score is 1.52, 1.5 on this column, 0.02 on this row. Go down from the 0.02 and over from the 1.5 and this is the percentile at 1.52. So let's copy this over to our worksheet and again you don't probably want to write on your Z chart because your Z chart is going to get quickly uh, just filled up with all sorts of pencil markings. Um, the 1.52 is going to be, let's see we choose chose blue for this student, is the percentile at 0.93574 or we're going to round this to three decimals here, 0.936 because the 7 pushes the 5 up to 936. And this means that student A, student A is 1.52 standard deviations above mu. You could have also said to the right of mu and 93.6% of everyone else is below them. So if we took a highlighter and colored in all of this area, okay, just colored it all in. Can't really get to that little spot with a big thick highlighter here. But you get the idea that this green portion, this green portion that goes all the way into this little tail here too, right there, yep, you see it, is 93.6% of the population. So I can subtract that from 100% and figure out how much percent is above him. But um, that is something we're going to be doing later. All right, let's look at our next Z-score. Oh, no, boy. Negative 2.34. That is not a good z-score. I'm going to use a red pen for this one here. Negative 2.34. Oof. Right? That puts you way down here. That's your flag right there. Negative 2.34. By the way, this um, skill that I'm using about drawing on a um, normal curve with little flags like this, you're going to be doing this later. So this is something you should probably get used to. So let's check and see what this is on the z-score chart. So I'm going to go to my z-score chart here. Now this is the positive value side. So I'm going to flip this over and go to the negative value side. And what was it? Negative 2.34. Negative 2.34. Okay, so I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to see. Maybe I can. I can just squeeze it in there. Oh no, it just gets out of reach. 2.34 is a little bit too low to be able to see this all on the same screen at the same time. But negative 2.34 as my z-score puts you at negative 2.3. And this is negative 2.30. This is negative 2.31. This is negative 2.32. This is negative 2.33. And this right here is negative 2.34. This is the value we need if we scrolled up, 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 up. And I'm going to keep scrolling up here. Scroll, 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 scroll. And you can see that, yes, I would be in the correct, um, correct column here. All right, so there is my value. Now, if you are going to count from left to right, be sure that this is negative 2.30 here. So sometimes people start counting one, two, three, four, and that's not counting right. So we got our table value from z equals negative 2.34. From the table, this is 0 0.00964. Or we're going to round this to three decimals. Now the six pushes the nine to a 10, so this is 0 0.01. Now you can add 
a zero if you want to be stylistic here because we're going to move the decimal over two spaces when we talk about the meaning here. Student B is negative 2.34 standard deviations. from the mu. Now, you can see that I did this in kind of a interesting way. You'll notice I didn't use the word above and below when I used the word from, because the negative 2.34 indicates direction. So if I had said student B is negative 2.34 standard deviations below mu, the negative and below would have actually put you on the wrong side. So you could have said student B is 2.34 standard deviations below mu, and that would be correct. So this is the wording's tricky, right? But, but you get the idea because there's this little itty bitty space, this little space right there. You see that little red space? It's very, very small because if we move this decimal two spaces to the right, 1% just 1%, see, just moving that two spaces to the right, 1% is below them. So that negative 2.34 is pretty disastrous from the idea that 99% is above them. But that's really how we deal with the Z chart. The Z chart is always from the below perspective. All right, now let's do this 0.7. Now, what gets the students thrown off a little bit is that just sometimes just 0.7 is actually more difficult than the ones we just looked up. Let me explain why. So 0.7 is a positive score. So I'm going to go to the front page here. Now, 0.7 is kind of quick to find, right? Because here is the 0.7. But now you're probably wondering, like, well, but there were no decimals after it. Well, that's okay, because if there's no decimals after 0.7, you use this first column, because this row has a zero here. So this value right here is the z-score at 0.70. See? 0.70. So from what I gave you on the previous page was just 0.7. So let's go back here again excuse me, <laughs> go back here again, and realize that 0.7 is pretty good. It's pretty good. Now, is it is it above normal? No, it's actually right here. This flag is between the mu and the 1, so 0.7, okay? And the 0.7, if we looked it back on the Z chart, was 0.75804. or rounded to three decimals. 0.758. So student C is 0.7 standard deviations above mu. So still with inside the normal range, still with inside normal, but um, that's actually pretty good because the percentage of people below them is pretty high. 78, sorry, 75, not 78. 75.8% is below them. All right, so if I take a green highlighter and just highlight all that distance to the left. And again, it's a highlighter, so I can't really get into that nook there and all those spaces. But if I could fill those in perfectly, what I would then have is 78, 75.8% of the population below student C. And you could subtract that from 100% and figure out how much is above them, which we will do in the next video. All right, so this one, I think I'd like you to try to do this yourself. So maybe pause the video and then go and check out and see how well you did, okay? Now, hopefully you've unpaused the video and 
uh, you tried it yourself. So let's look up on the z-chart here. And this last value here was on the positive side. I'm erasing that. Let's go to the other page because we're going to go to the negative. Now this value was negative 0.2, which stylistically would be like negative 0.20. So we're looking at this row in this column because this would be the z-score at negative 0.20. All right. So sometimes putting that zero there helps out a bit. So we'll go back and do that on the actual page as well. Might have been a good teaching technique to show you that adding a zero would make it a little easier to find on the z-chart. See, there's negative 0.70, which now looks awful. Um, <laughs> let me try to make my zero a little bit further away. There you go. All right, so where is this located now? Negative 0.20 is really close to the norm, but on the left of the norm. So this is negative 0.2 right there. There's my flag. And that flag, that, and that kind of sloppy line that I drew, this flag is going to basically mark uh, where everybody's to the left of me. And from the chart, that was 0.42074. Four. That's a four there, not a nine. Uh, we're going to round to three decimals, so 0 0.421. The seven moves the zero to a one. So student C, or sorry, student D in this case, is 0.2 standard deviations below mu. So you can see that I did this right by dropping the negative and saying below. So I'm moving mu in the left direction of 0.2. I could have also said student D is 0.2 standard deviations left of mu. And then we get to the percentage, which is 42.1% is below them. Now I want you to look at every single, whoops, I probably should do my highlighting right. So I get my, let me get my yellow highlighter here. All right, so that yellow highlighting is 42.1%, which, you know, kind of compared to the green highlighting, the green was 75.8, the yellow was 42.1. So I want you to look at all of these boxes that we talked about what student A, B, and C, and D. And speaking of highlighting, there's one word that was the same in all of these, and that was the word below. Below. These words, all being the same, tells you that the z-chart that you're using always reads in percentages that are below your z-score. So if we take a look at the z-chart. Here's the second page, right? Here's the negative page. See, look where it's highlighting. It's always highlighting below z. And then look at this. Wow, a lot of highlighting below z. So now you should be able to read the z-chart like a champ. And again, you could use some technology to read the t-chart for you. Like there are uh, calculator programs and computer programs where you just type in your um, z-score and it converts it to the percentile. But knowing how to use this chart is incredibly valuable, especially if we have to go backwards or do other processes. So in the next video, we're going to look at taking these chart values and deciphering some story problems above and below and between them. All right, thank you for watching.